in today's video, I'm going to walk you through what is required to set up JWT authentication within your Spring Boot application. I have a Spring Cloud Gateway application that is sitting in front of my microservices. And I'm setting up JWT authentication within my Spring Cloud Gateway. So any API request that comes into my microservices via the Spring Cloud Gateway needs to first get authenticated. Let's have a look at my code base and understand how I have set up my JWT authentication. The first thing to check is to make sure that you have added the required dependencies within your pom.xml. For your JWT authentication to work, ensure that you have added the artifact JJWT. To secure my API, I have added a package called security within my project. So we'll go through these classes one by one. So over here, the class that I have is called router validator. And the purpose of this class is to just get me a list of endpoints that are secured. So I define a list of endpoints that are open. For example, if an API request is made for registration or login or for API docs or you Eureka server, then I don't want to secure them. But everything else apart from these open endpoints needs to be secured. The next class that I have is called JWT token util. And the primary purpose of this class is to generate a JWT token and to validate the JWT token. And internally, it will utilize the JWTS libraries to do the work. And during validation, in case the validation fails, I'm throwing some custom exceptions based on the error that is encountered. And the final one within my security package is the class called authentication filter. So this class extends the abstract gateway filter factory. And then all this is doing is basically adding a filter in the filter chain to make sure that I validate my authentication token. So I'm auto wiring the router validator to make sure that I only validate the API endpoints that are secured. And then I'm auto wiring the JWT token util. This will be utilized to do the token validation. So the first thing I'm checking is to make sure that my endpoints are secured. And if they are secured, then I'm doing the token validation. So first I extract the authentication header, and then I'm using the JWT token util to do the token validation. And then in case of any exceptions, I'm basically returning an error response. So next up, I am defining some model classes in my model package. And I have the authentication status. This is to capture the authentication status. And then I have an error response DTO. And in case of exceptions or errors, I'm actually returning an error response. And then finally, I have the JWT request and JWT response. And moving on, the next set of package that I have is the exception package. And these are just the custom exceptions that I have defined wherever the JWT authentication is failing. So I'm basically returning those exceptions based on the different scenarios. So next, what I have done is defined a JWT authentication controller. So this basically maps an API endpoint called authenticate to do the JWT authentication. So whenever the authenticate endpoint is called, it will basically first do the authentication. So over here, I've hard coded the username and password, but this can be something that can call a database to validate the username and password. And then based on the validation, it can return the authentication status. And if my authentication fails, it will basically simply return an error response to you with my error message. And if that's not the case, then I will call the JWT token util to generate an authentication token. And then the token will be returned as part of the response. I have also defined a JWT config class where I am loading a couple of config properties, for example, the secret and validity, and this is loaded from my application.yaml. Within my application YAML, I am providing the secret and validity. Now over here, you can see that I'm hard coding my secret directly in the application YAML, but ideally this secret should come from the environment properties. So with this, I have covered the entire setup of the code within my API gateway for doing JWT authentication. Now let's move on and have a look at this in action. So over here, I'm using insomnia to call my API. And I have added a new post method to do my JWT authentication. 
Now, let me first make a call without authenticating anything. So if I go back to my get method, get car makes count. And over here, if I just send this request, and I'll be getting this error, which is internal server error. So something's wrong in the backend. And if I look at my IntelliJ, I have the services running on the backend. And you can see I'm actually getting this exception, missing authorization header. So I need to add the authorization header within my headers. So going back into my Insomnia client, I just need to add a new header for authorization. So I'm going to add a property over here called authorization. Be a Z. And then I need to add a value. So the value needs to be here and then the authentication token. So for now, I haven't generated the authentication token. So let me add some garbage value. And then let me make this call. So if you have a look at this now, you will actually see that I'm getting a 401 unauthorized response. And if I look at my IntelliJ ID, you will see that it's actually getting me, me the JWT token malformed exception, which is the error message is invalid JWT token. So I haven't actually generated the token. Now let me go back into my insomnia client and then let's generate a JWT token. So I'll go back to my authenticate endpoint and I'll send this request. And over here you can see I have the JWT token. Let me copy this token. And then go back into my method call. And then instead of this garbage value, I'm going to add this token. And now if I send the request, I get a response 200 OK. So at the moment I'm just get calling this get car makes count. And it's returning me a value of 20, which means that there are 20 makes in, available in my database. And same with my other API calls as well. If I have the correct authorization header with the correct token, and if I send a request, you'll see that I'll, it'll return me a 200 OK response. So that means my JWT authentication is working successfully. So this is all that I had to cover in this video. And I hope you find this video useful. And thanks a lot for watching.